Hi, welcome to Organic Chemistry. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be talking about the organic functional group halides. Specifically, we're going to introduce table R from your reference table, talk about organic halides, and then finally do some examples at the end. So let's start off by talking about table R. So many other organic compounds form when other elements replace one or more hydrogen atoms in a hydrocarbon. These atoms or groups of atoms are called functional groups. So right now you should have table R open in front of you if you are taking you know, regions chemistry or you can look at the one on the screen. These groups replace hydrogen atoms in a hydrocarbon and give the compound very distinctive physical and chemical properties. So over the next couple of videos, we're going to be talking about all these different classes of compounds. Today though, we're going to just focus on the halides. So what is an organic halide? When any of the halogens, specifically fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine, replaces a hydrogen atom in an alkane, the compound is called an organic halide or halocarbon. Now, could we do this in an alkene or an alkyne? Yes, but for the sake of this course, we're going to focus primarily on the alkanes. Important things to keep in mind, the number of halides used in the compound and where the halides are located in the chain. So again, this is referring to part of your region's reference table, specifically table R. Notice that it gives you the class of compound. We refer to these as either halides or halocarbons. The other really, really important thing to notice is that they give you the functional group, specifically fluoro, chloro, bromo, or iodo. Notice that they give you the spelling here. That's really, really important. So if you're not sure how to spell these, please go to reference table R. Then they give you the general formula where we have R and an X. The X represents any halogen, so fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine, where the R is going to represent your hydrocarbon chain. And then finally, they give you an example. So here we have two chloropropane, and I know it's propane because we have one, two, three carbons, and then that chlorine, which we see right here, is coming off of our second carbon one, two, three. That is why they're calling it 2-chloropropane. And again, this is given to you as a condensed structural formula. Let's do some examples, starting with fluoromethane. So the first thing I'm going to notice here is the meth part of this, so one carbon. Every carbon is going to have four bonds. It's A-N-E ending, which again, with meth, it's only one carbon, so all this would be surrounded by hydrogens if it was just methane. And then we have our fluoro. So the fluorine here, you can put anywhere. So I'm gonna put it on the top. So the fluorine goes right here, and then all of these other spots would be filled up with hydrogens. Let's look at our next one, fluoroethane. I'm going to start with the F, so one, two, a-N-E ending, which means a single bond between the two carbons. Every carbon has four bonds, so I'm going to put that in. And then again, we have a fluorine. Again, it doesn't matter in this particular case where we put that fluorine, so I don't know, I'm going to put it down here. There's my fluorine. And then we have hydrogens going around the rest of the molecule. Let's look at our next example. 1,2-dichloroethane. Now we have some more information. So again, I'm gonna start with the F. 1,2, A-N-E ending, so a single bond between the two carbons. Dichloro, that means I'm gonna have two chlorines coming off of this molecule. And they're going to come off of carbons one and two. So I'm gonna start off here by putting in all the lines where I know carbon can form a bond. Then it's 1,2-dichloro. So that means if I make this carbon, carbon number one, and this carbon, carbon number two, that means I'm going to put a chlorine on each of these carbons. Now, where exactly, again, it doesn't matter where you put that chlorine as long as you only have one chlorine on one carbon and one chlorine on another carbon. 
So I'm going to put a Cl up here and a Cl up here. Hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogens all the way around. And then just to show you the condensed structural formula here, if I was going to write it, it would be CH2Cl, knowing that that chlorine's coming off the first carbon, and then CH2Cl again to represent the next carbon, the two hydrogens that's coming off of that, and finally the chlorine. Let's look at our next example. One bromo, two fluoroethane. Okay, so again, I'm gonna start with my parent chain, my F, one, two, A-N-E ending, so a single bond. One bromo, two fluoro. Okay, so I'm gonna put in my bonds here. So we're going to make, again, I'm gonna call this carbon one and I'm gonna call this carbon two. One bromo, I'm gonna put my bromine up here. Now, could I put it on the side or the bottom? Sure, absolutely I could. I just feel like putting it at the top. Two fluoro, all right, now I'll put the fluorine down here just for giggles. I'm gonna put in my hydrogens around the rest of the molecule. And then finally, I'm going to write the condensed structural formula at the bottom, just so you can see what that looks like. So we'd have carbon, C, H, 2, B, R, showing that there's the first carbon, two hydrogens are attached along with the bromine, second carbon, H, 2, F. So C, H, 2, B, R, C, H, 2, F represents one bromo, two fluoroethane. Let's look at two more examples. 2,2-dibromopropane. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the prop. One, two, three. A-N-E ending, so single bonds between there. Give each carbon its four bonds. I'm going to number my carbons. One, two, three. And then I'm gonna look at this. Okay, 2 2 di bromo so two bromines coming off the second carbon br br hydrogens around the rest of this and then when i write out the condensed structural formula for this it's going to be c h 3 c b r 2 could you put br br yeah you could but i'm just going to put br2 because it makes it a little bit tighter Notice that's not diatomic bromine. That's two bromines coming off that second carbon. And then finally, CH3. So CH3, CBr2, CH3 represents 2,2-dibromopropane. Let's do our last one. 2,3,3-trifluorohexane. All right. So we've got hex. That's six. One, two, three, four, five six, A-N-E ending, so all single bonds in between. I'm going to put bonds all around my carbons. I'm going to number my carbons. Two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to again look back at the name. Two, three, three, trifluoro. Tri meaning three, fluoro meaning fluorines. So now that I have my carbons numbered, I can put a uh, fluorine on the two, two fluorines on the three, and then the rest of the bonds I'm going to fill in with hydrogens. Went a little outside of the box there, oh well. Finally, I'm going to write the condensed structural formula for this. C, H, three, C, H, F, representing that fluorine coming off of the second carbon, C, F, two representing the two fluorines coming off the third carbon ch2 ch2 ch3 and that condensed structural formula will represent 233 trifluorohexane so what did you learn we introduced table r which we're going to use a lot over the next couple of videos we talked about organic halides specifically fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine and then we did a bunch of examples. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.